Um, when a proposal is made that will incur three, four hundred million dollars more a year, I don't think that's being, you know, when we raise questions about that, I don't think that's being penny wise and pound foolish. I think it's all about big pounds that are at stake. And when I listen to some of the comments from Mr. Giam and also his colleague, uh, Mr. Jameis Lim, uh, you know, I'm reminded, uh, Mr. Chairman, with your indulgence, there's an Ernest Hemingway book, you know, The Sun uh, Also Rises. And in it, there's a character, Mike Campbell, and he's asked, how did you go bankrupt? And he replies, two ways, gradually and then suddenly. And I think we need to remember this. If we resist every effort to optimize to, and if we champion every effort to increase services or collect less, but resist every effort to perhaps increase fares and other measures to have the financial resources to do what we need to do, then what we will end up with is this. The creep will be gradual and the end will be sudden. And that is the risk that we run. So what we are trying to do here and I think I'm not the first transport minister to make this point. It has been made by generations of transport ministers, and I'm sure many more to come, is really to strike that all essential balance. I don't think there's a monopoly of virtue here in terms of wanting to help Singaporeans, especially those who are in vulnerable segments. But what we are trying to do is make sure that we are being fair to our commuters, to our taxpayers, to the vulnerable segments, and also to public transport operators and their financial viability.